Hudson Valley Weather Senior Forecaster Bill Potter uh, wanted to do a video to try and get uh, a little bit more information, uh, try and bring everyone up to speed as far as where uh, the storm situation stands and where the forecast stands for Saturday into Sunday morning for the Hudson Valley. Um, we've done some Facebook uh, updates and we're going to try and have a brief update on the website as well in text format. Um, but this is probably going to be a little bit of a long video. And it's just because there's a lot to go through. And we really want to try and show you why the forecast is as complicated as it is. Rather than just saying it's a tough forecast. Um, there's a lot of conflicting information. And... A lot of the information has been changing frequently uh, in the last day or so. So, real quick to get you up to speed. Um, and I apologize if this uh, for the quality of this video. Like I say, it's going to be rather informal. Um, I'm just working live off the website. I haven't prepared slides or anything, so we're just going to move through. Um, you know, these maps are courtesy of website. Uh, tropical tidbits. I want to give them credit. They got some great maps we use all the time. Uh, there's also some maps uh, on here from Weatherbell, the snowfall maps. So you'll see those as well. Um, this is the GFS model. Uh, this is the latest one that came out. Just came out a couple hours ago, uh, Thursday night. All right. Nothing major change to start. You see the storm climbing up the coast here. Centers off the coast of North Carolina. You got very heavy snow. Uh, Central Virginia from Richmond up to DC, Baltimore getting up into Philly. This is uh, overnight hours, Friday night into Saturday, and this is uh, Saturday morning, um, right around sunrise. Now this is where the models diverge. Everything's pretty similar up to this point. See the low pressure centered right off the coast, uh, off of Virginia Beach almost, and you can see it's it's pretty intense storm. Uh, the circulation is counterclockwise, so you've got a lot of strong winds uh, coming uh, onshore, very gusty winds, that's why you have all the blizzard watches and warnings because of the winds in addition to the snow. But you notice these dark blues here, it's very heavy snow, um, Maryland, D.C. area, I mean this is where the bullseye is expected to be with this storm, and they're talking upwards of two feet there. The forecast is pretty cut and dry in that area, anywhere from Philly, D.C., Baltimore, you know, basically 18 to 24 inches plus. I mean, it, it's pretty much a lock. Um, our forecast, not quite so simple. From this point forward, what you're going to see is the GFS model kind of splits the energy out here. You notice that this uh, these circles are isobars, lines of equal pressure. And you notice how there's a little circle with an L here indicating low pressure. But notice how, like, this is uh, very oval shaped and how it's kind of spread out. The model is struggling with, and most of the models are struggling with, what to do with this energy so it's spreading out and it's just creating havoc as far as the end result of the models are concerned. Um, at this point in time, the storm stops progressing north, starts shifting its energy to the east. All right, This is uh, Saturday evening. You can see that it wants to pull low pressure east out to sea. Simultaneously, you've got a low pressure trying to hang back here off the coast of Virginia. You can see the snow is New York City, Philly, D.C., Baltimore, you know, but the snow in the Hudson Valley itself, here's Orange County, Ulster County, Sullivan, Dutchess, Putnam, Westchester, Rockland. I don't want anybody to be left out here. you got uh, Columbia and Greene counties here as well, and Delaware County. You can see there's no snow in our area. The GFS model never gets the snow in there, uh, with the exception of possibly Rockland and Westchester. And by Sunday morning... There goes the storm, departs. All right, that's the GFS model. The result from that is this. Not very much in the way of snow. Um, New York City, about three inches of snow. As soon as you go north of the city, this where the blue meets the gray, that's uh, the two-inch line. I mean, so basically nobody in the Hudson Valley breaks two inches. <laughs> and if you're pretty much anywhere near north of I-84, you don't even see snowflakes, according to the latest GFS model. Okay. That's the forecast that we've been really kind of holding tight to. It's been the most consistent. Uh, the European model agrees with it. The Canadian model agrees with it. Um, there's been pretty good agreement 
um, with minor variations over the last two to three days on this type of scenario. The exact cutoff of this line of snow is the question. It's shifted up north a little bit at times, back down south. But the key is, the other key to this is uh, the cutoff. You'll notice this blue line here, where the blue meets the gray, is two inches, while where the purple meets the blue is six inches. And then, I mean, I don't know if you can see these numbers, but then you've got 20, 14, 13. So, I mean, there's no uh, scale on this map. But this is roughly, let's call it 50 miles from 2 inches to 14 and 20 inches. So the gradient is very sharp. It's a very sharp cutoff from a ton of snow to no snow. So if this model were to shift north 50 miles, all of a sudden in the Hudson Valley you're talking about 3 to 6 inches. And, you know, in Rockland, Westchester, you could be approaching a foot. A big if, all right? So that's what you see with the GFS model. Well, the latest Canadian, excuse me, Canadian, <laughs> latest NAM model, okay? Now, NAM model is not one we've discussed very often in the last few days, and the reason for that is that the NAM model is also another American model, but it's a short-range model. Only forecasts 84 hours into the future. So until we're about three days prior to the storm, that model is useless. So once you're inside of three days, the NAM model becomes another useful tool that you can use. And there's other short range models um, that f really focus in on uh, two to three days and even less than that in some cases. All right? And it's when we got into that window that we started to have some headaches. This is the NAM model. Uh, again, the Thursday night model. So this came out at the same exact time as the GFS model that I just showed you. This came out. And watch progress forward all right we're going to get to uh friday night all right uh this is friday night around seven o'clock uh this is saturday morning one o'clock in the morning and there's a couple things to notice here all right number one you've got this low pressure is off the coast of north carolina the other thing you'll notice is the snow shield has already made its way into the part of the hudson valley all right that's a big key here all right as you move forward look at how far north this snow shield extends on the nam model okay and you can see it goes all the way up to albany there's snow on this map and look how tucked in and tight to the coast this low pressure is it's right on the delmarva peninsula all right pretty deep storm and that is one of the big differences now and Apologize, I'm going to bounce around a little bit here. I'm going to back up this GFS model to the same time. Okay, so this is the same time. GFS, NAM, GFS. Look how far south the GFS is. All right, low pressure is all the way down by the Virginia North Carolina border, and there's no snow anywhere to speak of in the Hudson Valley. But at the same time, the NAM has the storm. Oh, about 100, 150 miles north, I'd say, uh, over the Delmarva Peninsula, and snow well into the Hudson Valley. That is your big difference, and this is what's causing a lot of people to scratch their heads at this point in time, because we're just going to cycle through. you notice the NAM has plenty of snow in the Hudson Valley. This storm continues to linger right off the coast of uh, Maryland, and uh, this is... Oof, three, four o'clock, four o'clock, uh, Saturday afternoon. And now you're in the Saturday night. And then finally, after midnight, it begins to pull away. All right. A tremendous difference. Tremendous difference between the GFS model. Remember, the GFS model had this much snow. The NAM model, well, yeah, <laughs> looks a little bit different. And, um, when you're trying to generate a forecast, um, <laughs> you you really uh, have to wonder what to do with this. Um, doesn't mean this is right, not by any stretch. Uh, the NAM model has uh, you probably never heard of the NAM model for a lot of good reasons. It's not a it's not always a great model, but used in the right situations, this model is a very useful tool. All right, and. I mean, this is just widespread over a foot. I mean, 
again. All right. So is it right? What kind of backup does the NAM model have? Well, NAM model, this, this here is, uh, this model is called the SREF model. It's a short range ensemble forecast. Basically what it is is a whole bunch of short range models that project out 84 hours into the future. And what they do is, you know, think it is 28 different models, uh, that run, or 26, excuse me. And they run 26 scenarios. And then they take them, all the individual scenarios, lump them together and take the average. So basically you're just trying to get, um, the best representative sample as possible. What this map is showing you is what the latest potential for a greater than six inch snowfall is. All right. And it gives you percentage chance, percentage probability. Hudson Valley at this point in time is in, and I want to make sure I did this right. One, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. Yeah. 40 to 50%. So 50% chance that Hudson Valley sees greater than six inches of snow. And it's based on, this is going to be really hard for you to see. I apologize. Um, it's going to look like a big mess. <laughs> These are the individual runs. This big one in the middle is the average, all right? It's, it's the, called the mean. Basically, you take all the different ones together, take the average, that's the mean. Um, so this is the average of all these individual scenarios, but you can see different scenarios here. You're going to be really hard to see on screen, so I apologize, but this scenario has, you know, almost an inch and a half, two inches of liquid, which would be like 30 inches of snow, you know, and, and you have some that have no snow whatsoever in the Hudson Valley. So this is a lot of uncertainty. That is the main takeaway from this video is that there's tremendous uncertainty with this system and really Alex and I have spent a lot of time on this today so I apologize for rambling apologize for being tired again I told you this would be an informal video at the beginning um, one of the main tools that we're trying to utilize to get this right is what happened last last winter with the big blizzard that wasn't and you know if you remember back to that uh we had a huge snowstorm forecast it all signs pointed to a major event for the hudson valley and at the last minute it skirted east 100 miles and we missed the storm in the hudson valley and got maybe two three inches tops in some places um we're trying to use the tools and the things that we learned from that to possibly forecast better this time. And um, some of the things that happened, some of the things that we saw happening with that storm, we're seeing again with this storm. Case in point, we had pretty good agreement last storm on last year on the European model was persistent. The European model insisted that we were going to get slammed by that blizzard. Uh, last January and the GFS model was pretty on board but it was kind of iffy at times similar to this year um, we didn't really use the Canadian all that much last year but so the European which is a great model we rely very heavily on it insisted that that storm was going to hit and then once we got in you know about 48 hours away from the storm we began to get information from the short range models that I just showed you that uh, something was wrong, that it was not looking like the storm was going to be a direct hit. And a lot of people threw that information out the window and said, well, the Europeans on board, so we're going with it. Well, I just want to remember, I want to remind everybody, this is what the European model showed. I don't know, you probably never saw this. This was the European model's forecast for the big blizzard. 54 hours, basically two days prior to the event. So about as far away from the event, uh, from this event as we are now, the European model last year was saying 10 to 20 inches of snow in the Hudson Valley. And we know that didn't even come close to happening. So yes, the European model and the GFS model have been insistent that there will be no snow in the Hudson Valley this year with this storm. That's why we're hesitant. That's why we're not sold. So if you wonder why the forecast is so convoluted, I hope that helps. It was a 15-minute video. I apologize. Hope it was informational.
Love your feedback. Take care.